after we die. Everyone wants to know, could we have been here before? Will we be here again? Seven, eight, nine, ten. Some people try to find answers by undergoing a special kind of hypnosis to look for memories of past lives. Just let it unfold like a movie. Just tell me what, what you see or perceive. I'm in France. In Scotland. Like a gold rush thing happening. All you need to do is call it up and imagine it. Georgina Cannon is the director of the Ontario Hypnosis Center. I guess I'm being sacrificed. I'm male. I would say I'm the queen. I feel white. We've asked dozens of Canadians, skeptics and believers, to give this method a try. <laughs> Not as a scientific experiment, but as an exploration of a mysterious experience. I'm in a box, and people are putting roses on me. Roses on me. I'm Sarah Kapoor. I'll investigate what our volunteers describe. And if possible, I'll take them on a trip of a lifetime. Bill Milling, I'm 58 years old. I'm a realtor, meaning I sell real estate, commercial, residential in downtown Toronto, which I love to do. Bob? It's Bob. Hi, I'm Bill. How are you? Hi, Stephanie. I'm Bill. How are you? I have a son, Christopher, who's uh, 29 years old. I was born in Boston. That's where this accent comes from. Because it doesn't pay you to rent that out as offices. It's stupid. You want to use it for residential. Today's volunteer, Bill Milling. He doesn't know if he believes in past lives or not. Okay, boys, we got to move the troops. But he's curious and willing to try a past life regression. I became involved in this project uh, just as a lark, as, a, as an adventure. Uh, I don't know if I believe in past lives. Um, I actually tend to be skeptical about it, but I thought it'd be a great adventure. Bill had no problem letting Georgina get him into hypnosis. So relaxing down now, one, two, three. I wonder though, is this easy for Bill because he doesn't take any of it seriously? Good. That's right, seven, eight. What if something serious comes up? Can you just go deeper and deeper? And tell me what you perceive in a different place and a different time. United States. Mm -hmm. I think it's maybe like 1907. Okay. What's your name? Oh, okay. Tom. Tom, okay. <laughs> I want to say Tom Tom. I don't know what that's. I want to say Tom Tom. Okay. Um, Tom. Maybe, maybe people call me Tom Tom. Okay. Tom? Tom Tom. Tom Tom? My name is last name was Jenkins. Jenkins. <laughs> I don't know why I feel like what I do to earn a living isn't particularly nice, but that's what I'm feeling. Okay. Let me think. It has to do with booze. Okay. Maybe there's a prohibition. Maybe I am a bootlegger. Maybe it's booze. I think it's booze. Okay. Yeah. Chicago. <laughs> Bill's memories about a life as Tom Tom Jenkins are fairly specific. A quick search shows that the details make sense when you put them together. Sort of. Maybe it's a booze. I think it's booze. Chicago in 1907 was a time of temperance, bootleggers, and booze. And he got that right. Interesting. This needs more research. But first, I think I need to meet Bill. I need to find out how much he already knew about Chicago history before going into this. 
You never know what little areas of interest people gather info on. Hey, Bill. Hi. How have you been? Okay. What are we here for? Well, what I found after doing some preliminary research mm -hmm. is that the person you described... Wait a minute, yeah? ...could have existed in turn-of-the-century Chicago. Okay, but... Okay. Could have existed? Could have existed. Okay. And so what I'm doing is I'm going to Chicago this Sunday to try and find oh, some wow. material evidence. <laughs> oh. Well, this kind of leads me to the next thing. Do you know a lot about Chicago history? Chicago history? Yeah. No. You know, probably the most I know about Chicago is what you see, you know, the kind of stuff in the movies where they show gangs and stuff like that. But I don't know anything about Chicago from a historical standpoint. Like, what's at stake for you here? Why well, are you even letting me do this? Because I think it's a hoot. It's a new experience in my life. But for me to go beyond, like, oh, yeah, sure, to, like, Oh my god, you got my attention here. I need to see something. I like Chicago. Walking these streets, I think about what it must have been like in the past. Could the Bill I know really have been some guy named Tom Tom Jenkins? Did he walk these same streets in 1907? And can I find any evidence of this? Past life hunting is a bit of a stretch, but that's why I like it. The most specific thing Bill said in his regression was where he used to live. It's a house, nice house, nice, well, you know, not a mansion, a nice house. Mm -hmm. What's the name of the street? Oh, gosh. You always ask me these things, let me see. A lot of work. Um, Van Buren. Van Buren. Something like that. Okay. Van Buren Street. It doesn't feel like a name that you just make up. Before coming, I asked Bill if he knew any street names here. He said no. Maybe I am a bootlegger. Maybe it's booze. I think it's booze. Package liquor store. Booze everywhere. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, that's the way it used to be. That's why even... I set up a meeting with Chicago historian Tim Samuelson. I need to know if Van Buren Street was the kind of place where Tom Jenkins might have hung out. Did this street connect with the scene Bill described? We're at the corner of Clark Street and Van Buren, just yeah. south of downtown Chicago, actually the edge of the downtown area. And this is an area that actually was known at the turn of the century and even a little before as Little Cheyenne. This was kind of the levee, this was the red light district, an area where all the stores were saloons or gambling houses, houses of prostitution, you name it, it's like a shopping center of every kind of vice that you could imagine. So this is the kind of place, if you were into bootlegging, you'd be in this district. Right. This was kind of the place that always was on the edge of the law and the activities that went on here. And most genteel folks would never even venture. But if you were district. running rum, it's, it's a good oh, chance the, that this would be your haunt. The perfect place to be. Describing this scene, Chicago, early 1900s, 1907, around that, being in this area of town as a bootlegger. Well, certainly uh, it's not that well known for someone in Toronto to know this kind of detail about the history of Chicago 
would be very unusual. In fact, even, I'd say most people in Chicago aren't aware of it, and that probably even there's maybe a small core of historians that know the story of kind of this kind of seamy aspect of Chicago's South Loop history. Do you think it's weird? I certainly think so. I can start to imagine just how such a thing, but certainly those are things that all add up, and there's a continuity there. So Van Buren Street in 1907 was a place a bootlegger would have called home. Van Buren. And according to Tim, not widely known information. The place fits, but does the person? And if you listen carefully, you can hear them call you by name. What's your name? Oh, okay, Tom. Tom, okay. <laughs> really did live a life as Tom Jenkins, there'd be some record of him. I need help finding documents, and I'm counting on genealogist Craig Fancook to give it to me. I'm trying to find out if there was a man named Tom Jenkins that lived in Chicago between 1907 and 1945. It's in your realm of possibility? Oh, absolutely. No problem. There's all kinds of different sources that I can use, from censuses to city directories, even probate and property records to take a look at. There's a lot of stuff that we can look into to see if we can find this guy for you. My name is Laughing with Jenkins. Thornton Jenkins. Let's see here. Thomas, Thomas, Thomas. Maybe, maybe people call me Tom Tom. Yeah. Could be him. Yeah. Right age. Yeah. I've got Craig working the archives. And I also gave Bill a call, updating him on what I found out about Van Buren. He's hardly on the brink of an identity crisis, but I do think he's starting to wonder how far this will go. Tom Tom. I want to say Tom Tom. Is it really so hard to believe that we've all had past lives? Sometimes I think it's just another story we made up, something to console ourselves in the face of death. At other times, I think, everything in nature transforms and continues. Why wouldn't human beings? That's why I'm in Chicago, searching for a man named Tom Jenkins. I want to say Tom Tom. I don't know what that is. I want to say Tom Tom. Okay. My name is Lathing with Jenkins. Jenkins. Maybe people call me Tom Tom. This morning I find out that the results from the genealogy search are in. Hi. Hey, hi, how are you? Good. How did it go? Well, it went okay. I've got some Tom Jenkinses out of the 1931 telephone directory. So... More possibilities. Some that could have been around in between. They were 19, around. They, they were. They were around. They were in the city. We've got these guys in 1920. I hmm. can show that they were also here in 1930. We can tell what these Jenkinses did by looking in the censuses. Like this Tom Jenkins in the 1920 census. He's about the right age for you. He's 34 years of age in 1920. But he's a shipbuilder in a Chicago shipyard. Craig had found five Tom Jenkins, two that were about the right age. Some were laborers, and they were the most likely to have a second income from under the table bootlegging. So I wish I could nail the guy down specifically for you. Hmm. But there's one more connection to make, the address. Van Buren, something like that. Okay. And the number in your house? 38. 38 Van Buren. I'm hoping Tim will be able to show me the house Bill described. Then I could do a property search to see who owned the place. It's a house. Nice house. Grass, some grass, some trees.
should be right about in here. What are you doing? What was that? What was the move? Well, I'm actually counting off the space that there would be my address numbers from the corner because 38 wasn't at the corner. But still, to get you as close to the spot as we can, this is uh, probably the best I can do for you. To get us to 38 Van Buren. Tim assures me this piece of Chicago was never grass and trees. There never would have been a building like that in this part of the city. I mean, that, that this was totally commercial and built up with big, solid, substantial buildings. 38 Van Buren had always been a commercial property, never the house Bill described. Could Tom Tom have spent time there? Maybe it was definitely the right area, but there's just not enough here to warrant further investigation. But I'm not done looking into Bill's case. I've got one more chance. Because during the hypnosis, Tom Jenkins, Chicago, 1907, wasn't the only past life Bill came up with. OK, now I'm in the country. I don't understand this. There's green, lovely green, lovely green. It's Ireland. If we have lived a million different lives, wouldn't some of those memories travel with us? Maybe coded somewhere in our DNA? Somewhere that we don't even know exists? In this case, is it Bill's subconscious? Okay, now I'm in the country. I don't understand this. I'm in the country. Okay. There's green, lovely green, mm -hmm. lovely green. It's Ireland. It's Ireland, huh? Yeah, it is Ireland. Mm -hmm. Ireland. I'm not seeing a date, but it, I, it feels like it's 1850-something. Okay, good. 1850s. At the count of three now, move to the next event in that lifetime. One, two, three. I'm in school. Uh-huh. It's in Dublin. Mm-hmm. And what do they call you? What is your name? Oh. Kevin. Okay. Kevin? Kevin? I don't know what the school is. It's like a university. Religious, setting religious thing. Mm -hmm. You know, where I'm like, I'm there for a, mi a purpose, a mm -hmm. mission. Mm -hmm. There's a very definite sense that I've, I'm there for a reason. I'm there, I'm like, really have so much purpose. What do you have on the desk? Is there a desk? Look. Mm -hmm. Books. Yates. Mm -hmm. A Bible. Mm -hmm. a, a missile. Okay. Like that you take to church with you? Right. Okay. I don't think that, um, even though I have those things on my desk, I don't think I'm a religious person. I think that I'm there to get rid of some of the myths, get rid of some of the bad things about religion. Mm -hmm. I think I'm there studying that to free people from the dogma, the dogma. Ireland, it's almost too much like I pictured it would be. There's pockets that still seem like it's the 1850s. Bill said that he, in the life of Kevin, studied in Dublin. It's like a university, religious. I'm studying religious things. Narrowing down where is my next task. 
Again, I can only figure this out by putting the fragments from the regression together. Catholic, University, late 1800s, Dublin. Once again, I need help. All my Irish contacts told me to get a hold of Tommy Graham. He's a Dublin historian, and when I explained to him what I was trying to do, he insisted we meet here, in front of University College. So he placed himself at a school in Dublin. It was religious, neither in the city nor in the country, there for a purpose, there to study, perhaps writing a book. On his desk, he described that there was a Bible, a Missal, and a book of Yeats. And he says, he's not a religious person, per se, but there to get rid of myths, get to rid get of rid of the, the bad, bad things about religion. To free people from the dogma. The dogma. So given, given that as the few fragments that mm, we have... Mm, mm. The, missile, the missile was suggested as Catholic. What would be the importance of a missal on a person's desk? A missal is a prayer book, basically. Mm -hmm. So if you were, you know, a young man seeking further education of Catholic background, where would you go? Uh, you, would, you would go to the Catholic University, which was established in 1852 in Newman House here behind me. Maybe I'm writing something. Maybe it's like I'm working, writing like a book or something. Could you be writing anything against the church? Yes, no, no, no. He, he, well, maybe not publicly, you know, but it's uh, a testament to the success of Newman's vision that these institutions were able to produce all these um, erudite critics of the institutions. That's the irony of it. Well, uh, that, that, I mean, that phrase know, that you say, a critic of the institution, yeah, fits. Yeah. It's yeah. the description given. Well, I mean, that's the irony of, of modern Ireland. I mean, everyone's anti-clerical now, but they're all educated in Catholic institutions. Do you know what I mean? So they must have done something right. And that's it, you know. What's amazing is that this person, this Canadian, hmm. was sitting in a room in hypnosis for two hours and came up with, you know, those fragments, yeah. which do seem to be... It's not like it's impossible. Yeah, it sounds plausible, yeah. It's definitely. Hmm. Is there any other place that he could have been at in Dublin? I know this place works the best, I think, for the fragments. This would be the most likely, you know. Newman House has rooms that look exactly like they were in the 1800s. I think this might be the environment Bill was describing. Newman House had a reputation for producing critics of the church. That's exactly what Bill remembered doing as Kevin. And if he was Catholic, this is the only place he would have been doing it. I think it's time to call Bill. Hi, this is a message for Bill from Sarah. Bill, um, you know what, I've been doing a lot of research in Ireland and the research has turned up um, a piece of information that I think you need to see. I think you should come to Dublin. Now it gets really interesting. You can take research only so far with past lives. At some point, the only person who can say this feels real or not is Bill. He's agreed to come to Dublin to check it out. If Bill really had a past life as someone named Kevin, could just being here bring back even more memories? You know, it's kind of interesting because I don't know what the next four or five days will be like. It's still kind of like something, you know, like that's fun, that's happening, that I'm kind of playing around with over here. It's not serious to me. If it became serious, I actually don't even, I, I really don't know what, what it would be like. It came from somewhere. Um, it didn't come from anything that I knew that I knew in that I have no knowledge of Ireland or Irish history, no knowledge or have been in Chicago, so it came from somewhere. There's green, lovely green, lovely green. It's Ireland. I don't know what we're doing, but I'm looking forward to it too. Well. I mean, I'm like yours. 
before I show you anything, I think it'd be a good idea to review the regression. Okay, good. Because we have it on tape, and I just think... Oh. You need to sort of take a look at it. I'd have to watch it. it? Well, parts of it. Okay. Are you interested in doing that? I don't know. <laughs> Why don't we? Why don't we look at it? Okay. Why don't we watch it? Are you nervous uh, about watching? Yeah, I am. Why? I'm. I'm nervous about. Like, see, I have no idea what I look like on camera. Don't worry. Oh Jesus. <laughs> I'll have to rewind a bit. Is the volume good? I'm there for a, mi a purpose, a mission. There's a very definite sense that I've, I'm seeing I'm a room, but I don't see the exterior. I don't know if it's a house. I don't think it's a house. I don't know why I don't want to go inside any of these places. I just want to stay outside all the time. I want to leave. I just want to leave. I don't know how to get out of there. And I want to go, and I don't know why I want to go. The room feels like a prison. I'm really scared. Oh, God. Did you remember all of that? Not all of it. What was it like to listen to that again? Emotional. <clears throat> Upsetting. Why? Um, I'm more involved in it, maybe because I'm here. It isn't so much like a lark. Yeah, I mean, one of the things I ever wanted this, to be real honest, I wanted to keep this as a lark. Like, oh, it's fun, blah, 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 you know, blah, da da. But um, that would, like, um, that affected me. Like, it felt real when I listened to it, to me. So, you so it's a little be, bit emotional. We'll see what it all means when you take a look at some of Okay, questions. good. And we'll have time for shopping? Yeah. Good. In fact, immediately. Let's okay, go. good. We'll go to the place, I'll get upset, then we'll go shopping. You yeah, know? yeah. what Beautiful. you saw? Yeah, really rolling. It's a... Yeah. Because now I'm in this, like, really pretty green countryside. And there is a cottage made out of stone. Mm -hmm. It's beautiful. Mm -hmm. But it's sort of all by itself on this kind of rolly countryside. Do you remember describing a stone cottage? Yeah. Anything like this? What, did yeah. it look like this in your mind's eye? In my mind's eye, look, yeah, it just certainly didn't look like anything we passed, like pretty and like, yeah. like no, kind of poor, kind of poor. Yeah, love to own something like that. Would Something's you live in it? Oh yeah. Are you kidding? In a flash. Are you okay? Oh yeah, I want to look inside. Stones. Like they were all piled on top of each other. This this falling down stone cottage really like has this has this like this incredible emotional appeal. Like it's beautiful. To me this is absolutely beautiful. There's a wooden door that looks very safe. 
I guess they gotta go inside. Oh. They, are, they are stairs. I'm not gonna go up. No, no. I die to go up. Bill, what is the sense of, that you get sort of when you are in this place after sort of seeing something like this while in hypnosis? I just, it's almost like I can't take in, I, I just want to take in every detail. Mm -hmm. I want to remember everything. It feels very nice. Careful on the rocks. But from the period you described. The, you know what? This angle right here, this, this really resonates with me. I don't know what it is. It seems like this trip is starting to awaken something in Bill. If this little stone cottage stirred up this much emotion, how is he going to react when I take him to Newman House? I don't know. It's something that I'm studying. That's very important to me. I don't know what the purpose is. But it's some religious, spiritual thing. I'm about to bring Bill into the classroom. It could be that he's already been here. Not as Bill the real estate agent, but in a past life as a student named Kevin. How weird is the idea that you could be in the same room as two different people? And what happens to the person you are if you could remember the person you used to be? The only place in Dublin that you could have been studying was here. Really? Newman. The only place? The only place. Okay. This was the only place where Catholics were getting recognized university degrees. And oh. that was in the mid-1880s. So we kind of have a sense of time of when Kevin would have been here. Yeah. yeah. So it could have been So it works. The yeah. timeline oh, works. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. That's weird. There's a couple more things to show you. Okay. There's actually a space upstairs. Yeah. I could see myself walking somewhere. I'm very serious. Mm. Are you ready to go through the door? Oh, dear. Uh -huh. well, this, okay, oh, my heart's beating. Yeah. This is, this is the classroom. This is where Kevin would have studied. Yeah. Okay. Take a look around. I'll tell you something. The other interesting thing that you mentioned in your regression yeah. is that on your desk you had three books. A Bible? I, I, a missile? Yates. Yates was published, his first poems were published what? in the Dublin University Review, which yeah. would have been circulating at that time in 1885. That's the same time that this school was just opening up and granting university degrees to Catholics. I'm being speechless. What do you think? I'm there for a, mi a purpose, a mission. There's a very definite sense that I've, I'm there for a reason. Is there another space in this building? Why do you ask? You like, because while this resonates, there was another space that was smaller than this. I can't believe he just asked me that. There is a small office across the hall. The room feels like a prison. I want to get out of the room. Oh, my heart is beating, and uh, you know I've been, you know, I've worked really, really hard to be skeptical about all this. And what happens is emotionally, some stuff starts happening, like when I'm here, mm -hmm. that um, generally, you know, overcomes my skepticism. And it's just like something that I haven't wanted to say. Mm -hmm. But yeah, this feels strikingly um, familiar. Mm -hmm. 
This is a place that I wonder if it'll seem familiar to you. Yes, it does. It's here. This, I don't know why, but this little indent here. You know how because the fireplace is here and there's an indent with this corner, like just say you know how like there's this little corner here. Mm -hmm. That resonates very much as a detail. Hmm. Like cause look when I when I look this way, that was the view in the regression when I was looking. It would be like in the regression if I was standing here, right here. It was okay. Well, really freaky, but it was about here. See how that comes out? Mm -hmm. That was that was what I saw in the regression there. This was exact, and it wasn't like this or anything. It was like this, right, like this angle. Looking onto your sort of exactly desk. Yes, desk and that corner. Do you have any sense that you've been here before? I'm totally resisting saying yes. Yeah, I do. Like I, it feels like it just stops. And I don't know. I don't know how it just stops. This is not, I, 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 the only thing I can think of is the only thing that's coming to me is a knife or something. Like that. Here, here. Here, I did. I... I killed myself. Well, if he was a pauper, he, he was buried just up here. Okay, let's go look. Shane McTomash is the historian of the Glass Nevin Cemetery. Bill said that Kevin was destitute by the time he killed himself. Could he be one of the 200,000 Dubliners in the unmarked patch ahead? Suicide in deeply Catholic Ireland would have been probably the most shameful thing that a family member could have done. You know, it, it would have been, it would have been as bad as, I don't know, giving up the faith and turning into a Protestant, even worse in fact. Because it wasn't just that you could repent, it was too late to repent. There's Cerberus, the dog yeah. of the underworld. Okay. Uh, You're not worried about it. No. Um, it, it wasn't that, with suicide, you couldn't repent. It was too late, you were dead. It was an internal damnation. So there would have been, for anyone remaining, enormous secrecy, enormous shame. In true Irish fashion, they would have swept it under the, under the carpet and never speak about it again. And all of, all of that lifetime set in Dublin would lead to the only possible place would be here. Oh, if he committed suicide in the 1880s, 1890s in Dublin with very little money, there was nowhere else he could have been buried but here. In this little plot of land? In this little plot of land here. I know I have to bring Bill here, but that's different from wanting to. What does a person do when they're taken to what might be their own grave? I was a bit reluctant to take Bill to what might be Kevin's grave. I didn't expect the research to turn up such definitive locations. So worth coming here? Yeah, absolutely. But Bill was happy, almost eager to come along. 
let's yeah. say that Kevin existed. Right. And that he was Catholic. Right. And that he was poor. And that he also committed suicide. Yes. There's only one place in Dublin that he would be. Right. And it's right where we're right standing. Under, right under us? Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Um, would he have been buried here even though he had committed suicide? Yeah. This is where they put suicides. Oh. And so Kevin could probably one of them. Well, if... If... All of the fragments mm -hmm. of the research yeah. and of what you said yeah. lead to one destination. Here. Right here. Right here. Wow. Just take your time. I killed myself. Well, this kind of like does finish the tour in a sense, because it's at the end. What do you think? Um, it's really interesting. Um, I didn't, I didn't actually, I hadn't thought a lot about it, but I, you know, I knew that suicide in the Catholic Church is grave, grave, or not not meant to be that way very serious mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and that people that committed suicide uh, it was unspeakable here and as you look back over that lifetime oh. what wisdom and understanding can you bring from that lifetime into your current life doesn't have to be that way To just capture the love that's there, to see it, to see it, to see it, and to experience it, and to be with it, and to allow it to allow it to be in my life, rather than not see it. If you got to get out, there's other ways of getting out. That's it. That was the wisdom that you took. Yeah, I don't remember that. Hmm. You remember saying that? Well, I, yeah, I remember that saying that there are other ways out. What was what was the wisdom? That that there are other ways out. Just that there are other ways to live your life. Doesn't have to be that way. Mm -hmm. And to permit to permit the love in my life, for me to be present to it and to see it. Mm -hmm. You know. It's funny how that piece of wisdom came out of. Are reflecting on Kevin's life. This life really aligns a lot in regard to the experiences, almost like what this guy's soul was and what, what he was concerned about, very similar to in my life now. It feels like I, it feels like it just stops. I think I, there was a, a point in my life, in my life, about 18 years ago, that was really desperate. When when um, when I was uh, leaving, when I was leaving my wife, and when I was coming out, and the time before leaving was uh, was really torturous. Breaking up my family, dealing with all that, um, and I left and did what I had to do for myself. I didn't kill myself. Didn't just sort of kill myself slowly, day by day, by living in an existence that that made no sense to me anymore. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe I can maybe I can actually thank Kevin from that life for having gone that other way before, which is to kill himself to get out of a situation that he couldn't be in. What would the advice of your past life self be to your Oh, just enjoy yourself for God's sake. And if you make mistakes, so what? Well.